And now, you're tuned in to RBLR, the home of Tampa Bay's Reveler Sports. This is your RBLR Rays podcast. I'm your host, Jack Cobb, along with my co-host, Pat Davenport. Pat, what is happening? Why did... Right, okay, a bit of context. Literally a minute before we went live, I said, hey, what would be the odds that we had a a trade happen live on the pod today? And while the countdown was going down, Isaac Paredes has been traded to the Cubs like right this second. Right Um, now. The the specifics of the deal are still kind of coming through. Jeff Passan has tweeted one minute ago that the Rays are getting Christopher Morrell and a pair of prospects back from the Cubs in the deal for Paredes. What those prospects are has yet to be um, disclosed, but uh, that's where we're at. Paredes gone to the Cubs, which was not the team that was kind of in the radar for Paredes. We had a lot of smoke about the Astros. We had a lot of smoke about the Yankees, uh, even the Texas Rangers, and now the Cubs. Apparently. Yeah, we, uh, because that I, I, and I really didn't expect it to happen this fast because I, I, I we definitely heard stuff about Paredes to the Yankees and and the Dodgers, but it seemed like the the conversation was there is a bidding war going on between the, the Yankees and the Dodgers for Paredes. Um, and for him to get traded to the Cubs is just wild, especially because the Cubs are like bad right now, relatively yeah. speaking. They're also playing a game right now, which is wild. I think they're playing they're playing the Royals right now, I believe. Which be Morrell was they... in that game. <sighs> That's great. It's Hugwatch. Oh my, go- oh my gosh. Yeah. So yeah, he was he was in the game. I'm trying to see if he he batted in the last. He did not bat in their last inning, which is crazy. When did he get taken out of the game? Because I'm curious. So he he batted like an inning ago, popped out. Right. Good grief. And now we our game just ended, winning the series against the Reds, which is great. And now in the span of what four days from Thursday to now, we have traded four players, all a part of all big contributors to this team. So we're going to talk about it more. Uh, if you're here with us live, thanks for being with us here. Don't worry. We're going to get to everything. We're going to talk about it all. We're going to talk about what we think the team is doing, what our expectations are. Do we need to re-level set expectations for the season? What are, what's, What is the plan right now? We're going to talk about it right here on this show. So I guess we're going to start talk about uh, I guess let's talk about Randy first because we can we can let the Paredes thing sit for a minute. Oh, my mind yeah. is blown. I'm not happy about it. We're gonna give it a second to, to to chill, and we'll come back to it once we get some more information as we're getting it live. But but we'll start out where this all the, the kind of the explosion that kicked off. I mean, really to me that kicked off the trade deadline. Randy Arozarena traded to the Seattle Mariners for two prospects that while not necessarily ranked very highly in the the current system, because again, prospect rankings do not get updated during the season really much at all. Uh, very highly thought of prospects. So what were your thoughts when you first heard the, the, the trade news? Okay, and I, I think there are two... I'm so glad we're podcasting now uh, and not the day it happened because, yeah. and I, I think this is like a totally, totally acceptable reaction of heartbreak, of yeah. absolute devastation. Um, this is let's let's take our brains, let's take the the actual motivation behind the move, let's take the prospects out of the move for just a second. It really, really hurts as a Rays fan, knowing that more often than not, players you will get attached to will get ripped away from you when you think it's too soon. That will happen to you more often than not. It's happened literally minutes ago (laughs) from now. Um, Players will get traded away often before you think they should, but that's that's by design. That's so you can trade them at peak value just before they start to regress. But Randy, what he has meant to this team cannot be uh, overstated. It was 
him that carried us to the World Series in 2020, he has been essentially the, the poster boy of the team for the past four years. He's had a whole section of left field dedicated to him. The joy that he's brought us, the um, performances that he's brought us and um, the charisma and that he's brought to this team that has kind of allowed the Rays to be better respected on a national level simply because he is there. Um, is is wonderful and the way that he's connected with the fans and the community has also been wonderful um i will not think of this era of race baseball the kind of neander um era of race baseball without randy rosarena being a key key part of it and he was considered a throw-in in a trade that it's crazy uh, got jose martinez who we were all like yeah jose martinez who ended up being a whole dose of nothing and randy was the whole star of that all along um yeah I was, I was i was absolutely devastated i didn't even want to read the prospects uh that we got back at first i needed some time to go go for a walk and sit in my feelings for a little bit how, how did you react to the randy news i think it was i mean i woke up to it because i was i was asleep when it happened um it was just a very strange way to start my day because a lot of emotions definitely came in there um I think, I mean, I have images of Randy at the World Baseball Classic when Team Mexico gear. I have images of Randy smacking home plate after the Brett Phillips walk-off in the World Series. Those are never going to leave my mind. And, and, and all of the arms cross moments, there's so much that is just never going to leave my mind. He's been such a... It, it, it's. I don't think you can understate to the value of having a guy like him on the team to be the face of the franchise. When the guy who was supposed to be the face of the franchise had to leave the team, you didn't have this vacuum of like, well, now who do we how, No, Who's the guy? We already had a guy who was our arguably and really was the guy, even when the other guy was on the team. And Randy being that being the, you know, always the, the, the fans best friend throwing balls into the outfield, signing autographs, even the last day, the day after he was traded, coming to a Rays game, sitting in the stands, saying hi to fans, it just speaks to not only the kind of person he is, but also the kind of organization the Rays have built, where, you know, that's even something that you would even consider doing. It's clear that th there was a there's a lot of love between the Rays and Randy. There wasn't like a, a blow up or frustration on social media. He posted a couple of things just saying thank you to the Rays and to the fans. Um, it, it, it was, it was one of those situations where it, it, it there wasn't any really anger, really. I, I'm not mad at the Rays for doing it. I'm just sad. Like I was just like, just upset. Like that's really the only way I can, I can describe it. Like, because I can't knock the Rays for doing what they did. We'll get into it in a minute, but they did the right thing from a roster construction perspective. And even, you know, just generally it was the right move but it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. And I think that's, that's, that's something that sometimes gets lost in the sauce when we're talking about this stuff on Twitter, you either have to love it or hate it. And you have to say it was the right move. They did the right thing. And you're stupid. If you don't agree, or how could they do this? You're stupid. If you like this, I think what it really is, is yeah, I can see that this was the right move organizationally, but it still makes me sad. And I'm going to miss watching this guy play in a raised uniform. And there's, and that's just, is what it is. Like, I can't pretend like I'm happy about it, but I also can't pretend like I don't see the merit. So it's a very mixed emotions, but in, but at the end of it, it just comes with a lot of appreciation, admiration. I hope Randy kills it out in Mariners land. Um, although if we want to get back into analysis, I, I'm not sure he will just because of the way that ballpark is not friendly to new, to new hitters, especially coming in halfway through the year. Um, but it's it, it was a wild ride. I loved every single second of it, and I I hope he kills it out in Seattle. He looks great in a Mariners uniform. He kills me to say it, but he looks good. He looks good in those colors. He re he really does. I mean, he he looks good in in blue. What can I say? Does, blue is his color. Good in blue. Um, although I saw um I saw that the Mariners were teaching him the new kind of outfield. I know that hurt. Team. That hurt my heart a lot. And I was that like, no, feelings. let the man cross his arms. Let the man cross his arms. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's um it's yeah, it's a tough one. Um, and especially when you don't what the prospects we're getting back, which we will talk about in a mo, are not um immediate major league uh impact guys, which is completely 
fine, but it makes the move in the immediate sense harder to swallow because you yeah. know that these guys are considered real helium prospects. That's the term I've been hearing a lot yes. from people that know what they're talking about better than I do, is that these are helium prospects mm -hmm. that will rise through the system quickly, but are un will not make an impact in 2024, unlikely to get close to the big leagues in 2025. These are like 2026 talents. Um, do we want to talk about the return or do we want to keep going with the kind of broader picture? Um, let, let's, let's, let's go on to the Eflin trade and talk. I think we can get through our emotions on all the trades first and then we can, mm -hmm. we can, we can come back around. I didn't have as, I don't know about you. I didn't have as much emotions moving on from Eflin because I kind of expected it a little bit. It makes, it makes yeah. way too much sense given that Springs literally is going to slot into, we'll, we'll break it down more later, but Springs is going to slot right in to Eflin's rotation spot, literally Tuesday, Springs is going to be there. And I mean, as much as I love Eflin and I said, he was the best, I said he was the best pitcher on the, on the rotation to start the year. Springs is better. It's not close. So it's like, it's all good. Even though like, I, and, and I really liked Eflin. He was a fun guy to watch. I love watching him work. I saw him live. He's one of the few praise pitchers I've seen live because I live in South Carolina. So I got to see him live. Love watching him work. Uh, really appreciate everything he did for the organization. But I, I didn't have as much emotion. Maybe you felt differently. But I didn't really have as much emotion. As much of like, okay, this makes sense. Sad to see him go. Uh, he's going to do great, I think. But, you know, it, it is what it is. Yeah, I think after the Randy trade, this felt like it was very expected. It felt yeah. like anyone was on the table. And the most likely names that were going to get traded regardless of the Randy trade were the likes of Zach Eflin, uh, Rosario, who may still get traded yet. Um, and Eflin, yeah. very much expected. He's the highest earner on the team. Um, he was going to find it hard to find a rotation spot next year the yes. way that he's been performing this year. Like he's been completely fine this year and has been, was very good last year. But next year, the rotation is going to be an absolute battle. And with Springs coming back, Rad will want to be in the rotation next year. McClanahan will want to be in the rotation next year. And with Bars and Bradley and Pepe yep. being as good as... ...on the staff, when you could get what was an, a, a pretty excellent return, I would say, from yeah. the Orioles, which is a really good farm system and three good prospects from that system. So I didn't feel the sting as much. I hope Zach himself is doing okay because he um, likes the Rays. He's a Florida guy. Um, yeah. So for him to have to move on to a direct rival might be a bit of a weird set of emotions for him. But again, thank you for your service. You did exactly what you needed to do, which was be amazing in your first year, do enough in your second year to be a valuable flip for better people across the line. That is like the model Ray's way of doing things. Oh, yeah. And uh, they pulled it off to perfection with Zach Eflin. So thank you for thank you for everything, Zach. Um, you were a big part of what was a very, very good 2023 Rays team, and we wouldn't have been there without you. Yeah, and it, the weird thing is trading him to the Orioles. And I, yeah. I, I would feel weirder if we, like, I don't necessarily feel that we are as in direct competition with the Orioles for a playoff spot. Although the way everybody has been playing recently, it's all gotten way closer way faster and we're going to talk about that too because as much as it feels like we're losing all these guys uh just if, if you're upset just take a look at the standings and maybe you might change your mind a little bit because it's getting a lot closer a lot faster but that being said i don't know that we're really competing directly for a playoff spot with the orioles as much as we are the yankees the royals the red Sox, twins those kinds of teams mariners even so i'm not as like upset about that um, but it is definitely odd to trade him to Baltimore. I'm curious to see how he'll do there. Um, Camden, Camden Yards was once a big hitters park, now not as much. So we'll see how he does there. Um, I think he'll probably do okay. Um, but the, the Orioles really, really badly needed pitching. And to be honest with you, I, I love Zach Eflin. I think he's a really good pitcher. If that's all they get for, for pitching, then I am I, my, my level of – you know, concern about them as a, as, as a, as an opponent is, is still not very high because they really didn't like the, Zach Eflin's great. But if that's your big move to bolster your pitching staff, it is going to help them a lot, but it's, it's not a, like, it's not a showstopper that's going to like it's dramatically a, improve their pitching staff. It's a, a floor raiser as opposed to a ceiling raising move. Yes. Right. So it's it's a start that would not go to whoever their number five guy at the moment is, yes. which is an improvement. 
but it's not going to be like, oh my gosh, game one of the playoffs, we can throw Zach Eflin out there because we did that and it didn't go. It didn't, didn't, go so didn't well work out. Week. Didn't work so, out. But you know, it the return we got was really good. Three really good prospects. So we'll take that. We'll take that every day of the week. Speaking of three really good prospects, uh, that brings us to our next trade uh, for Jason Adam, which I predicted, if you've been watching the show, I predicted this and mentioned that it could happen several weeks ago, maybe months ago even. I don't remember how long ago I first started saying it. But I said that Jason Adam being moved made a lot of sense. He's kind of expensive-ish, not under a whole lot of team control, been pitching really well, makes sense to move him. Uh, and we got an absolute haul from the San Diego Padres to whom we traded him for uh, a top of the potential top to middle of the rotation starter, a fourth a potential fourth outfielder with incredible speed. And it may be the catcher of the future. So like this one, I feel like, you know, I didn't really have that many emotions tied up in Jason Adam. He's, he's been really good. Thank you for your service. Um, but I'm kind of stoked about the return for, for Jason Adam. Yeah. It seems like the relief market, on the uh, around baseball this year is super super valuable people are willing to pay a lot of capital for um relievers and good relievers at that which makes me happy we pulled this off because uh jason adams brilliant but to get what we got out of this trade i was like wow i don't want to call anything too early because again all of these guys are kind of in the lower ends of the minors still let's go yeah, you know, um, has a long way to go. Gonzalez only drafted last year, and and Bush, uh, I believe, is in Double A at the moment, so he's still got a ways to go as well. But like all of these guys have big, big potential, um, and all rank highly um, in the Padres system as well. So to get out of a setup guy, three really decent prospects. Some could be really, really good prospects. Wow. I don't know how we pulled that off. I yeah. I immediately was like, wow, we did that. That was, yeah. that was a real trade that we did. Um, so yeah, hats off. I would I would do that trade too. <laughs> I yeah. would do that trade if it came Heartbeat. through too. So thank you again, Jason Adam. I, I was talking last time I was on the pod that he is the biggest rock in the bullpen that we had because yeah. he would just come in in any situation, whether it was the, anywhere between the sixth and the ninth inning, he could do it and he'd make you worry about it, but he'd always get out of it. Um, yeah. And pull funny facial expressions along the way. Um, yeah. Love. I love that trade. I love that trade, especially if Lesko can prove to be something. Um, yeah. Then, you know, the Padres may look back on this and go, oh, what were we thinking, man? Yeah, and and again, when you look at this, is going to be a theme that we're gonna we're gonna talk about a little bit with all these trades as we kind of break it down a little bit more analytically. All of these trades, and we'll get into the Paredes is a little bit of a different beast, but even still with Paredes, even though I'm still a little upset about it, all of these guys that got moved have almost immediate replacements available. Adam is the same way. Drew Rasmussen is right now rehabbing in AAA to essentially do what exactly what Jason Adam does be the kind of stopper type guy. That's going to come in, have incredible, have even better velocity than Adam probably and amazing stuff. And he's going to probably fill the exact same role that Adam did. Um, so with, with potential to maybe go multi innings if you need him. So he pitched two innings his last time out and has been really, really good so far. So he's already on the way. So again, and, it, and you know, with Eflin, we talked about, we're going to already have, Springs filling that role. And then we going back to Randy, you have a, a, a platoon of Palacios and JDL that can fill in for Randy on a day in day out basis. And then it's going to give opportunities to guys like Curtis Mead, who is now up with the team and, and playing pretty well. He's looked really good so far since coming up. And with the trade of Parades, which we can talk about now, there's going to be, somebody's going to get an opportunity. So, so now that we've had a, a maybe 20 minutes to think about what, what just happened, that we just traded our starting all-star third baseman, which, which is not the first time the Rays have traded an all-star. They traded Wilson Ramos a couple years ago, if you remember that, after he yes. after he made an all-star. So it's not not that out of left field for the Rays to do it. But what are you but like what are you thinking right now? I mean, I was I remember we were talking in the group chat earlier today where the discussion was is this a fire sale is this a sell job yeah are the rays kind of calling it quits on this year 
um with the amount of guys that you were saying and we were saying no because we're not going to feel the sting of the production of these guys that much because of the guys available to replace him so adam like you said rasmussen we're going to get jdl and palacios to kind of platoon in left field and then uh for uh efflin we got jeffrey springs paredes i feel like moves the needle a little bit more towards yeah. a, like on on this year they're not like giving up because this team will not give up we've seen that the team on the field are mentality monsters and uh, will keep fighting. But the front office are saying these, we are getting offers that will benefit the future of the team, which is currently more precarious than how we feel about making the playoffs this year. Um, so they're saying we would rather build a long-term success now by taking a punt on this year than than potentially feeling the effects of it later by not selling when value is high on a lot of guys and it's a seller's market. It's a sell job. We are sellers, um, which is now cemented in my mind. We are selling. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean we are tanking. I think it's really important that I make that distinction. I don't think we're tanking. And I don't think we're, um, we're going to be in a position where we're losing a bunch going forward. But we are selling our most valuable assets and we're not taking on valuable assets that will affect the core or will um, affect the major league team right now which is selling. yet yet we still got you know, <laughs> it's still the, the trade deadline is not over we've got 50 hours until the trade deadline so yeah um I, i'm upset because i i felt like Parades was was a part of the the fundamental core of this team. That was the yes. this is what we're building around. Um, and it's frustrating to see a guy like that go. I was gonna this is a this is a stat that I was gonna throw out at this uh, I was before Parades was gone. That was gonna be kind of something to kind of talk about the way that the Rays do their business. And I'll mention it here. The Rays in the last I just looked in the last like you know run of success going back to like 2015, 2014, 2013. In that time period. And we're actually even farther back than that. I, I think I went back to like 2000, I think is, is, is where I went back to kind of look for this. There's no raised player, that uh, position player sp specifically, offensive position player, not pitcher, that has been traded from the Rays that has produced higher war in any season with another team higher than they produced with the Rays. Which was a long way of saying there is no, no player that has been better after leaving the Rays. That's been a position player. There are two pitchers that have done it, which is Tyler Glass now currently and David Price for two seasons. He had two really nice seasons. Only so he was getting traded during both of those, which is weird. Um, but he did have really nice seasons after getting traded. But those are the only two kind of guys. When you look at the other guys, Longo, we know what happened in, in San Francisco. Not great. Ben Zobrist had one um, pretty good year, um, but it still wasn't as good as his best year with the Rays um, for the Cubs. And then he, he tanked. B.J. Upton tanked not, not not any better after leaving Kiermaier one good year and he's now retiring and was having a bad year before that um so that being that being said the Rays generally are trading guys when they have already reached their peak value and are on the downturn this is gonna be the the exception to this one unfortunately I don't see a universe where Paredes is gonna be worse like he's gonna continue to and maybe not improve but he's gonna be at the same level he's gonna keep being really really good for the Cubs. That's just, you know, I, I don't see any world where he's not. I, I, it's, I think it's very, very likely that we're going to see him put up more war in one of these seasons with the Cubs than he did in a season with the Rays. So that's frustrating to watch because this is something that we haven't seen recently. Because as much as people talk about the Rays trading their stars, they don't really trade the stars in the middle of their star tenure. They tend to trade stars towards the end of their star tenure, not in the middle of it. This is the, kind of the first time we've seen that in recent days. So to me, that was unsettling. Um, I think the I, I'm going to guess that the trade market right now is a complete firestorm right now because of these the moves the Rays have made. I, I mean, I'm sure it's complete bloodbath. They've kind of undercut the Yankees a little bit, which is hilarious because now the Yankees are really floundering. They got Jazz Chisholm, but they really still need another guy for their infield. So we we may either bait them into super overpaying for Ahmed Rosario, which would be hilarious, 
or they're going to come away with nothing and continue to flounder. So is my, I'm not happy about it. I'm, I'm really upset that we traded him. I don't think it was a terrible move, though. H- have you seen much more about the return? Yeah, I haven't yes. seen, I haven't been checking yet. What do we got? I can I can live break the return for you. Okay. Um so the return is there is a guy that will join the major league team off the back of this deal and that okay. and potentially two. Okay. Um the first is Christopher Morrell. He is a third baseman for the Cubs. Yes, um, right. Yes. And the Rays had a lot of um rumors around acquiring him in the off season in fact. It's yes. a guy that they like. He has struggled this year. Um, if, if you're looking at basic slash line, he's batting 199, but has 18 home runs, seven stolen bases. He has a 97th percentile bat speed. He, he mm. hits the ball very, very hard. His expected slugging is in the 70th percentile. His barrel mm. percentage is in the 80th percentile. His hard hit percentage is in the 71st percentile. And he walks a lot as well. He has 11.2 walk percentage, which is very, yeah. very high. He has a cannon of an arm. Statcast hates his defense. <laughs> they think he sucks. He is in the first percentile in range, and his outs above average on the year are minus twelve. Um, Th, he, yeah. Maybe. So he he has played exclusively third base uh, in the field this year. That's not gonna happen. Um, last ye- last year, um, he played most of his innings at second base. But he also played the second most innings at center field. So Which he is can not play. Either. But he, he could play, play. Could he play a corner outfield? He could, could play, he play a corner outfield. Okay. All right. Because he has an arm. He has an yeah. arm on him. Yeah. Um, and he's about a league average runner. Uh, yeah. And he can hit okay. the ball super hard. He has a 30 home run potential guy. He has a bit of swing and miss in him. Um, he needs to be. Um, a little bit. He is disciplined, but he does have some swing and miss in him. I think yeah. I've heard comps to a little bit like Brandon Lau, but a bit less consistent. What, what but, the, is he? Is he a righty or a lefty? I don't know. He's a right. He's a righty. Right-handed Brandon Lau. We're a little bit like a right-handed we're, we're, we're Brandon. Call Lau. it now. But not as good of a defense. Yeah. No, because Brandon Lau is sneaky good defensively. Um, so what I'm hearing is he may play a day or two corner outfield spot. He is. Yeah. He's going to probably DH a good bit. Um, and we're going to see a lot first. of, he, he could play third. I'm curious what this, I think we're going to see a lot of meat at third now. Hmm. That's my, that's my, that's or, what I think. Or, or Junior or, Caminero, who is absolutely beating the cover off of baseballs down in Durham right now. If you want to, if you want to feel better, go watch some recent, Junior Caminero highlights because the dude is literally eviscerating baseballs. He hit an 80 mile per hour curveball on the outer edge of the plate, 375 feet for a home run. The other like last night, just I mean he's he's crazy, um, yeah. he's crazy. So I, I guess so I guess we'll see with Morrell. Um, you I mean you could teach D. I mean maybe he sucks at defense now. They could probably he could probably learn to play corner outfield. Like yeah, he could probably figure that. that out if he's got a good arm. Cause like, what about like, I'm thinking about like Yasiel Puig as kind of a guy who, I mean, he's lefty, but like a guy who is, who's got a cannon out there. Maybe we can teach him to play defense a little bit and maybe he could Cespedes. just, yeah. Like maybe that, maybe that could, that, that could potentially work out for him uh, in yeah. the future. I feel like the only reason I don't say he's going to play third is because I think if we look at the way this team's going to have to play baseball to keep winning games, Infield defense is going to have to be really good. Yeah. So I, that's why I expect to see a lot of cabbie or third or, or mead at third going forward. Cause can, the infield defense is going to have to be good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the, 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 the raised value infield defense very, very highly. And yeah. Randy wasn't exactly a blow away left fielder defensively. So and we, this, that's another thing we talk, we talk about too, is when we, we look at replacing Randy JDL, I don't know if you saw the play. I was it yesterday. I think it was yesterday where he ran over, made a phenomenal catch in foul territory. I love Randy Rosarena so much. There is no way in the world he is getting to that ball and making that catch. It's not going to happen. Not at this point no. in his career, but, but JDL can make that play. And he played center field today to give Siri a day off yeah. his feet. So 
like the defense, I think overall as a team, the defense now losing Brady's is pretty good. Although he had two errors today, which maybe, yeah. which, I, which I'm going to, I'm going to put on me, at least me personally. I say, I wonder if he was thinking about getting traded when he had those two, his two errors today. Well, uh, who knows, but he's pretty good defensively at third. So we do, you do lose that, but I, the offense, the, the outfield defense is improved. Um, yes. With these moves. Yes. Okay. So, Another T, another player that could jump straight onto the um, major league team potentially uh, is um, Hinter, B- sorry, Hunter Biggi. Okay, I believe it's pronounced Biggi. Um, he is. Um, I mean, this is on the preseason uh, rankings, so don't pay too much attention to it. But he's the Cubs' number twenty-nine prospect. Okay. He is a right-handed reliever um, that pitched in the big leagues. At, at points this year um is currently in their AAA team he has insane stuff absolutely insane stuff he has a fastball that routinely touches triple digits okay um he has a wipeout slider he throws a sweeper as well he um is a scary mm. arm that mm. yeah he throws a really good cutter as well okay. um however you may have heard this story before. Command is not always there. Sometimes I knew that struggles was with command. <laughs> yeah. Um, but currently has, get this, a 41.7 strikeout percentage at AAA this year. Wow. Jeez. That's um, crazy. Yeah. And a 0.68 okay. ERA in AAA as well. So I think okay. if you're looking at an Adam okay. replacement, if you want to get risky, he could come straight onto the team today, and 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 not be a high leverage guy, but you could get. But he could. Get him but there. he could. Yeah, because I mean, I think what happens right right now is Clevenger and Poche move up a rung on because yes. they're kind of platoon neutral, so they kind of move up a rung, um, and then you've kind of got Kelly, Useda, Armstrong, and then maybe this guy are kind of floating around along with um, Emrod for the for the for the other innings out there. Um, so very interesting return. I, I mean, look, it's like you, Isak Braves was the best player on this team in the first half. So yeah. losing him, you are worse. Like period. Yes. You just are like, you can't, we can't pretend we can't sugarcoat that. He's not like, we don't, we're not sugarcoaters, but we do tend to, we're, we're positive people on this podcast. We're positive pod. But I cannot pretend that we are not worse as a baseball team. Does that mean we cannot make the playoffs? No, it does not. And you want to know why? Because this team is continually hung around. We are not winning games because of our blow them out offense. We are winning on grit, timely time with a timely hit or two there, here or there. Which yes, Isak has provided a lot of those. But there are other guys on this roster, including including the guy who is you know kind of been running the offense for the last month in Brandon Lau, who, who is, by the way, top 10 in all of MLB and WRC plus over the last month, just in case you're wondering. Yeah. That guy is there still. You still have Yanni Diaz, who's back from injury. So there are still guys that can make the offense do what it needs to do, and the pitching is going to be really, really good because mm-hmm. you're replacing Eflin with a really good pitcher. You're going to get Raz back into the bullpen to replace Adam. So the pitching is still going to be really good. You say it has been electric, really, really yeah. good. If you watched him, I today. like Emrod a lot as well. Emrod's been, Emrod's been good too. Um, you've got guys. So I don't think we're punting on this season. Are we worse? Maybe as a floor, our floor is lower now than it was. Whatever. 70, 96, 96 hours ago, or maybe long. I don't know. I, I can't yeah. do the math. Four sure. days, our floor is worse or lower than it was four days ago. Our ceiling, I think, is higher because you're going to get guys like Curtis Mead. You're going to maybe get a guy like um, Junior Caminero up whose ceilings are up here. So it's going to be wild. It's going to be, be a, it's going to be wild these last and, couple um, months of the season. Can I say something a bit harsh? You can. The team 96 hours ago was not doing enough the team 96 hours ago were masters of mediocrity they were 500 they were 500 on 24 different occasions yeah why not 
roll the dice. What if Junior Caminero? What if Springs? What if Christopher Morrell? Yeah. Just a little spice it up. Maybe a little bit of motivation. Hey, the front office upstairs aren't on uh, showing confidence in you. Light a fire under them. Yeah. Cash Maybe has been managing really aggressively. I, we, yeah. We've been talking about that in the chat too. Cash has been managing. He ma he managed the game today because Tyler Alexander was supposed to pitch today and he did not, which it, it almost felt to me like Cash was saying, I think these guys are better than Tyler Alexander. I'm going to, I want to win this baseball game. It's a one, nothing baseball game. I, I want to win this game. So we're going to keep, pumping with I think our best guys for these situations and we're gonna we're gonna try to win this game um so I, this is I mean I feel really weird right now because I feel like I should be really really mad that we traded these sock Brady's but I'm almost not because I'm kind of excited because this this is like in a weird way this might be the most excited I've been all season trades be trades are exciting whether you're buying or selling trades are exciting and we have done four now massive trades and i would yeah. be surprised if we don't have at least like two more yeah i mean i think rosario is probably going to get moved i would say and i think we're going to get an, a massive overpay from somebody for him because there just aren't that many more options out there right now there's just not a Fairbanks. lot of good options and fairbanks, fairbanks he could go I, I the only reason i don't think he will and i don't think he's going to go the only he would only i think he can he really can only go cuz i think if the yankees actually did trade for him that'd be incredibly stupid because because of the medical condition he suffers from which the name of which escapes me where he has issues in the cold it's a medical condition it's it, it, it's just is what it is it would not make sense for a team that plays outdoors in october and november to trade for him so i almost wonder if where he's not going to get moved i almost wonder if a guy like clevenger or poche might get moved because they've been pretty possibly. good. So they could get moved. I don't know if any more bullpen guys are going to get moved. We'll have to see. Um, I, maybe somebody who plays in a dome would trade for Pete. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think Pete's kind of perfect for the Rays because we play in a dome. Yeah. But, I mean, it's 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 been a wild couple of days. It really, it really, really has been. Um, and I'm glad that you mentioned Pete because I want to take just a second here. This is where we normally do our, our, our I, we, I make a stupid pun and we do our little ad read to talk about the shop, which you, which uh, you may, one may still be coming later. Just, just you wait. But I did want to take a second because I watched that interview that uh, Trisha did um, after the game with, with Pete and it, it, it read the story. If you have the time about what Pete and his wife went through this off season, uh, losing a child to Turner syndrome. Um, we really love if you guys would take a moment to just go. I mean, even if he gets traded, I don't care. There's two places you can go if you want to support him and support what he's doing. You can go to Turner, Turner Syndrome's Foundation, uh, dot org and then go to Fairbanks Strikeouts for Ellis. He's got these really nice T-shirts and bags and some other things there. Or you can go to RaysBaseball.Auctions on MLB.com where they're auctioning off a bunch of cool um, autograph stuff. There's a link also that's on screen that you can go. Um, to, to, to support him, uh, do, do, do everybody a favor, do the world a favor and go support him and what he is going through. Uh, do yourself also a favor if you didn't already and watch the interview, uh, post game with Pete. I don't know if part of the emotions were because he may be leaving the team, but it's really clear that this means a lot to him. He's an amazing guy. He's been an amazing part of this team. Uh, go, go give some time, go to give, go give some time, maybe give a little bit of money if you're inclined, uh, to an amazing cause. Couldn't agree more. It's a really, really great cause, and you know, Turner syndrome is 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 truly horrible to be be affected by. So any any donation would be massively appreciated. Yeah, he's a great guy. Definitely, get, at least watch those. You know, educate yourself a little bit. At least watch some some of the videos of him talking about it. With with the, he's done some interviews about it. Just give yourself the time to do that. It's it's well worth your time. Um, now, uh. Despite all of the what we just talked about, there is actual baseball is still being played and still going on. There were baseball games <laughs> played this last week, despite I, I crazy. And in those games that were played this last week, there were raised players that were really, really good. Two in particular that we'd like to highlight. So, Pat, who is our RB alarm of the week? Yeah, we're in agreement on both this week. Yes, we um, are. Our, our RBL arm of the week is someone that I feel like has won it like several weeks in a row now because he's just put it together every single time. It's Taj Bradley again, ladies and gentlemen. 
Taj Bradley again Shocker. with another electric, electric outing, this time against the Blue Jays. Uh, six scoreless innings. Uh, he's over 20 innings in a row. Um, scoreless now. Um, I think the only reason that he um, didn't go seven again, which would have been the the first time in franchise history that a Rays starter would have gone three consecutive starts of seven or more scoreless um, was yeah. because the Rays put up a big inning in the bottom half and he was sat down for a long time, so I don't think they wanted to get him back up again, I think was the only reason. Um, but six completely dominant shutout innings, whole bunch of strikeouts. He's done it again, ladies and gentlemen. Taj Bradley is the best pitcher on the team now and maybe has been for a month. It's funny. Over his last 14 starts since April the 26th, he has the third lowest ERA, which isn't everything, but the third lowest ERA in baseball since April 26th. So he's not just been good for like a little bit. He's been really good for a while now. Um, he, he's just going out there every five days and giving incredible performances every single time out it's super fun to watch him develop live in hd in front of us i don't know if he's going to end up pitching enough innings this year to get into the cy young conversations but i think he's going to be out around the periphery at least if he keeps pitching the way he's pitching right now he's been so good um and been so consistent since coming back from injury uh, he had a couple he, he was kind of bouncing back between you know sort of rough starts here and there and now he's really smoothed it out and just been really really good one of the things that's been the key to that is there's there's one pitch in particular that he is uh, it, the improvement on it has been really really impressive so if you look i just you know was really curious kind of as we were talking about because we've been talking about bradley being good now for a while and i was like well why like why exactly what has he been doing that has you know been such an improvement over even what he did last year because he was really really good in his previous times up but i'm trying to figure out if i can find the exact numbers but there's one pitch in particular that has really kind of taken – he's kind of taken to the next level this year, and it's really changed his game because it's given him a, a true weapon that's allowed him to kind of you know maneuver in and around because he's relied a lot on his fastball in the past, and that's still a really, really good pitch for him. He still gets good whiffs on it. He's still doing a lot of really good things with it, but he has taken the split finger. Which is kind of a which is kind of a pitch that he was he's been toying around with and has really kind of brought it up in usage over this last year. That pitch right now is allowing an expected slugging of 186. So he they're, they're, they're he's not getting any hard hits on it. The whiff percentage is 32 percent. The put away percentage is 30 percent. He's striking guys out with it. He's getting it in the zone just a little bit over 50% of the time. So it's a threat to be a strike and he's getting good swings and misses on it. They're not hitting it hard. It's been a big part of what's allowed him to be so successful as well as keeping his fastball in the zone above 50% of the time as well, which is th those that consistent strike throwing is I think what has really lifted him to the next level. His in zone percentage is still down a little bit of, of, of just a little below 50%, mostly being driven by the curveball. And the cutter, which I'd be curious to see how much longer he keeps the cutter because it's not his best pitch overall. And it is kind of leaking out of the zone a little bit. So we'll see what he does with that going forward. The curveball does kind of add a nice um, change of pace to his repertoire because it bites down a little bit more than the rest of his pitches. But that split finger doing wonders for him this year. Yeah. And do you know what? Alex Jackson calls it for him over and over again. He is so good yes. at calling the game plan for Bradley and help inject confidence in Bradley's stuff in a way that I don't think we've had a catcher on this team do before because the only consistent thread for me is every time Bradley's asked, hey, how come you are so good now? He'll go, oh, Alex Jackson calls a tremendous game yeah. for me. And that's the part that a lot of people will miss. And I don't want to turn a Taj Bradley discussion into an Alex Jackson d discussion, but like... Sometimes that's all it takes to turn what is like what was a, a raw diamond in um, in Taj Bradley, who we all knew had the stuff to succeed. Sometimes it's just having a guy that will know how to utilize your weapons best. And Alex Jackson has been that. And I would be shocked and appalled if anybody else catches for Taj the rest of the year as well. 
Yeah, and I it, it, and the truth is, as much as we've kind of said, you know, hey, this, this guy's kind of bad, bad, but he's on the roster, so it is what it is. Uh, sneakily, we're starting to see improvements from Alex Jackson on the offensive side of the ball. We've seen some home runs. We're seeing a little bit better plate appearances every time he's up. Um, so just kind of watch out on that. We may come back to that in, in a later week. Just just watch out on on good old uh, Alex Jackson. He might be a little better than some of y'all gave him credit for, and even I gave I didn't give him much credit either. So some of us have given him credit for. He, he's get, he, he's pretty good. Could some big fans of the podcast go back and figure out when we debuted the Alex Jackson song, and then do like a before and after splits on? how Alex Jackson performed before we made a song about him. I, I really think we should. Yeah, because he this past week he had 117 WRC+, plus, which is pretty good, but it's not good enough to win our Bat of the Week. Zach, who was lucky enough to take home the esteemed honor of RBLR Bat of the Week? Yeah, and this is kind of an issue that I had at the beginning of the season. I look at my notes for, for who the Bat of the Week is, and it's just a bunch of barking sounds been transposed. <laughs> onto my sheet i don't know what that's about but i do know that our bat of the week is brandon lau i mean come on he's been the the engine that has run this team all month long and he had another fantastic week last week brandon lau is just that he's just that dude he, he really is he is tied again he not tied he is the seventh best in wrc plus over the month of june Another fantastic week last week. The power is there. He's getting on base. He he is exactly what this team has needed to kind of keep moving our offense in the right direction in, in, in some of those times we've needed it. He continues to provide the power. He he's getting all the like when it's funny because when you know starting the year and earlier on in the year, the, all the counting stats that we, that are not always the biggest deal were, were look pretty bad. Now he's really he's creeping up on a 900 OPS on the season. He's creeping up back towards his kind of career average 260, 270 batting average, and then he's getting up to that 900 slugging. So he's kind of wow, crazy, doing exactly what he should be doing. And you know, Rays are still winning games, even though we've lost some guys and we're going to lose, and we've lost even more guys now. There's still a guy like Brandon Lau to rely on. So Brandon Lau's the batter of the week, and I expect him to win more bats of the week coming soon. Yeah, he's been tremendous, absolutely tremendous. And like I said, it's just, he just needs to be healthy and he'll do the rest. Like, as long as he's not feeling anything and his swing's right, yeah. he's probably the best pure hitter on the team. Uh, I, mean, I mean, a 149 on the season WRC plus now, which is, you know, all-star level, really. And uh, he's probably going to have his best season since that massive 2021 breakout campaign that he's had. Um, and it just took him a minute to get going. Uh, so, yeah, um, proud of you, Brandon Lau. Keep barking away. We love you. Um, he, I think, I can't believe I'm asking this. Is Brandon Lau going to be on the team in three days' time? Yeah, okay. I think so. Um, I... I, I I just don't see the Rays trading him because I don't think that any team is going to offer him what the Rays think he's worth. Yeah. I mean, maybe they will. Maybe they will. Um, I also, again, like, and we, we've kind of talked about this a little bit, and you you mentioned earlier that you don't think that the team is giving up on the year, even though we have we are selling, but we're not giving up on the year. If you trade Brandon yeah. Lau, you're punting. That's a punt. Like, like I, I'll say it. If, we, if this happens, I'll come back on this, the, you know, on screen, say it, that we're not we're not trying to make the playoffs this year. This is a year to let the kids play, is what it is. And I'm gonna be way more upset because I love Brandon Lau. We all, everybody knows that. If we trade him, it's a completely different conversation. But I don't foresee that happening. At least not at the moment. Unless something else dramatic happens, I really don't see a world in where we're trading Brandon Lau. Okay, can I can I do a fun or depressing exercise for you while we're here? Sure. I'm just going to say a couple more names. I just want you to give me a prediction of yes or no, they'll be on the team post-deadline. Okay. Okay, so this is just for anyone that's missed the start of the show, the first half of the show, which you can watch on demand on YouTube, by the way. And if you've enjoyed what you've seen so far, be sure to drop us a like and a follow, etc., etc. all the socials down there. Okay. Ahmed Rosario, will he be on the team post-deadline? No. Okay. What about Pete Fairbex? Yes. Brandon Lau, we've talked about. What yes. about Yandy Diaz? This is a tough one. I'm going to say yes, 
but I, I am not as confident in my yes as I were about Brandon Lau and Pete Fairbanks. That's a that's a that's a yes. Okay. What about? Uh, I'm trying to think. Is there anyone else that I need to cover? Um, Jose Siri. Yes. And one more for good luck. Uh, let's do Junior Caminero. So the Rays listed on everybody, right? If yeah. the so I'm gonna say yes, but I will say this: if the if the if the Rays trade Junior Caminero, something dramatic has occurred, where we have acquired someone that is an immediate fix on some level. I mean, I don't know. I can't even think. Like, I don't know who we would have to trade for to to, to be worth to be worth Junior Caminero, but it would have to be something dramatic. And this is the crazy thing: is we're kind of looking forward at the outlook for the rest of the year. The trade deadline is not over. They have, you know, they've they've sold a lot. They haven't really added very much. And we know, as we've seen in past years, the Rays tend to do a little of both. So it's a little suspicious to me, at least, that they hadn't traded for anybody and it's also a little suspicious that they've just they have just pocketed a bunch of prospects that with new extend expanded rules on the on the roster constrictions we, we don't have time to get into that this episode but the roster constrictions are are greater going into next season so you're gonna have less spots to put guys so something's got to give there i think they have enough spots to fit all these guys but it is interesting you brought in all these prospects some of which are going to go on the major league squad eventually and some of the guys in the minors right now are going to go to the majors. But you've got all these prospects now that are you've, – you've kind of fitted up a war chest of all your prospects. We were joking on the chat and wondering if the Rays are going to be the number one farm system by the end of the trade deadline, which they might be at this rate. Um, I, I don't know. I feel like there might be something in the water that we don't see coming in, in terms of the Rays adding. And I could be wrong about that. But I just – I don't know if the Rays are going to not add at all. I, I just don't know what they're going to – I just don't, want the, what, don't know what they're going to do. But I just think there's some there's some weirdness that's going to happen before this trade deadline's over. Mm, I think so. I think we're we're definitely not done. Um, also, fun fun fact: the the Cubs have taken the lead over the Royals right now. Um, so if they can, can Brady's get over there. It's how, let's see. They're <laughs> in. Where are they right now? They're in Tampa. So, so how far is it? To, yeah, they're in Kansas City or they in Chicago? Because Chicago, in KC. They're in KC. So he could. Uh, no, probably not. Um, probably couldn't get there in time. That's that's a good ways out there. Uh, but may, but yeah. is that the end of their series with them, or do they play more games against the against the Royals? Uh, let me double check that. That's a good right question. Now. That'd be hilarious if if Paredes goes over there and they have like one more game with the Royals and they end up winning the series. Because uh, no, of they're done. They're done. Oh, that's too bad. That would have been hilarious. After today, uh, the that's Reds. Too bad. The Reds are up next at, in Chicago, so Paredes will probably meet them in Chicago. That's. Are you serious? He's going to play the Reds again? Yeah. That's funny. He's gonna play the Reds like two straight series for different teams. That's a that's a I, we gotta. I'm gonna do some research. Has that ever happened before? A guy has been traded to a team where he will play the, the opponent that he just finished playing with the previous team. That's got to be a first. Maybe it's happened before, but that seems like crazy. And it's across divisions. That's bonkers. I really want to know if that's ever happened before. That's crazy. The bad news is the What's Royals. The, the Royals are gonna play the White Sox next. That is unfortunate. But the good news is the Rays are playing the Marlins next after a exactly. day off. So there's so, some good news there. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I want to, I know we're running a bit long. I don't think we'll even bother with, uh, with game they, recaps. The Rays went 500. You know the drill. Yeah. The Rays went 500. They've won. Uh, they've only won. They've only lost one of the last 11 series. They're good. They're going to continue. We're, anyway. Well, um, yeah, the, I want to end with one last um, one last thing. Um, first of all, just a bit of admin on the Paredes trade. I forgot to mention yeah. Ty Johnson also came over, who's an unranked prospect from the Cubs. He's currently in high A with them. Uh, he's a right-handed starter, um, and he's been he's been okay for them. But he's got he's a tall dude. He's six foot six. Uh, he has a kind of low three quarter release slot okay. so he's kind of okay. right right hand right hand a funky starter basically okay. um don't know much about him because i've you know i've, I've we've been doing a podcast <laughs> while uh while this has all been breaking down but he is also in the trade so the full trade is paredes for morel uh biggie and johnson okay is, is how cool. it goes 
Um, cool. I guess what I want to do is I want us to re reiterate um, to anyone listening that this is really hard watching guys that you like and have become attached to over the past few years yes. uh, get traded away in what seems like a too soon of a fashion. It's it's what sports is all about. It's what we do sports for. It's what we watch sports for is to grow connection to our team and in turn the players on our team and we root for them to succeed. So we get emotional about their emotions. We are happy when they succeed. We're sad when they fail. We become quite intimate with their personal lives because that's just be how being in the public eye is. We grow connections to these players. And it's really sad to say, hey, you don't get a choice in this, but this player is no longer going to be on your team. You're going to have to root against them in the case of Eflin and the Rosarena a little bit. Yeah. Um, and that's really hard. And I think the fact that this always happens as a Rays fan uh, can get draining and, and tiring. And I think I totally understand why people are frustrated and tired and react as strongly as they do to these types of moves. But I also want to say do you know what's way worse than losing a player being the white Sox right now being on a <laughs> being on an being on an l14 um you barely won <sighs> haven't even won 30 games this year you know haven't even won 30 games this year you've won about a quarter of your games and you don't know when that's going to actually get any better and or being the 2018 to 2021 Baltimore Orioles, where it was just awful baseball to watch, where you just had to sit there and watch your team lose. You had to watch Chris Davis. Lose. Yeah. And <laughs> this team, winning solves everything. And this team may have taken a very slight step back, but we've already talked about earlier in the show that it's not a massive step back really because of the replacements that are in the wings for the players we have traded away it will be a slight step back and it does open the door to some greater volatility in results because younger less experienced players are more volatile and have the potential for higher highs but also have the potential for lower lows so we yeah. open the door to a bit of volatility we're rolling the dice and broadened the spectrum of how this team will perform between now and the end of the season but not necessarily said we are definitely going to be worse. But what they have done is they have hopefully provided greater assurances that this team will never have to do what the 2018 Orioles did, never have to do what the 2017 Royals did, never have to do what the White Sox are doing right now, and that we will never be what the Rockies are. Yes. We need to remember just how good we have it. Five straight playoff appearances, we will unless august goes atrociously um we'll be playing at least semi-meaningful baseball in september yeah still whether we make the yeah. playoffs or not and while this season hasn't gone to plan because we expected better from this team this you cannot accuse the front office of being unreactive and not trying for the sake of this team and i think the players that we're going to see come into this team both at the major and minor league level over the next few days are going to be super exciting and we'll go wow you know thank god we traded a rosarena when we did because we've got uh aiden aiden smith we got brody hopkins or we'll be talking about how great dylan lesko is from trading jason adam or christopher morell may be our second half hero and hit 15 bombs over, between now and the end of september and go yes i can't believe we got him yeah it's what we do. We even have a T-shirt on the website, which is yes. not even to not even to plug the website, but you can get ten percent off if you use the promo code Floppy at shop .com. But, but like we do it every time: acquire, develop, dominate, repeat. And that's that's not a, that's not just a slogan that we put on the T-shirt. That's the way of life. And the only way we can acquire good players is by giving up good players because we don't yep. spend the money to bring them in as free agents. And we're lucky to be Rays fans, even if it's been a hard few days. And you are totally allowed to feel angry and upset. But when the yes. dust settles, I want you to really look at the players that we've got and go, wow, we've done really well there. And hopefully in a few years time, we'll go, wow, what a blinder we have played in the 2024 trade deadline, even though it was hard at the time. The long-term success that granted our organization made it all the more worthwhile.
And when you and when you lose a little bit of the frustration that's kind of maybe you know in your mind right now, and I've got some of it too, hop on all, over to rblrsports.com and read the article that Remy Budikavitz wrote about the two prospects we got from the Randy trade. We're going to be here to talk about it. We're going to be here with you through whatever happens in the future, whatever prospects hit or don't hit, whatever trades we make for the rest of this deadline, whatever happens, because as much as it, like you said, the, the floor is lowered. Isn't this kind of a classic Rays baseball team right now? A bunch of scrappy guys who, with some a lot of talent who are fast and play good defense, and we're going to pitch like heck. And it's going to be kind of crazy, and we're probably not going to blow many people out, but we're going to have fun, and it's going to be complete nonsense probably for the next two months of baseball. But you know what? It's going to probably be fun. It's going to be it's probably going to be entertaining. We may not win as many games as we would have liked to at the beginning of the year, but it's probably going to be really entertaining, and we're probably going to really bother a lot of teams that have World Series aspirations. And who knows? We might just mess around and make the playoffs. I still think we can and will make the playoffs. I haven't changed my mind. I still think we can make and will make make the playoffs and who knows what happens when we get in there if you get to the postseason and you've got a great pitching staff a couple good relievers and a couple of big bats who knows it's all on the table as as it works uh, for the rangers it worked for the rangers who knows man it's gonna be a wild ride i'm just glad that we've got the best fans in baseball here to share this incredible journey with. We really appreciate all of you that kind of have watched us go through a glass case of emotion here over the last hour. We really appreciate it. If this is your first time watching the show, you you got a wild one for the for your first time here. Uh, if you're coming back, you know, you kind of maybe, I, I'd be curious what you thought our, our responses were going to be and how we actually responded. You can leave comments about that. Tell us how you think too. We want to we know how you're feeling too. Drop comments on YouTube or on, or on Twitter here. And let us know how you're feeling too. We want to know. We want to talk about it with you and see what you're feeling as well. And if you would just do us a huge favor and hit the subscribe, hit the follow, hit the like to, to kind of keep with us because we're going we're gonna to talk about it. No matter what happens, if we are terrible for the next two months, we're going to talk about it. If we are amazing for the next two months, we're going to talk about it. If we're somewhere in between, we're going to talk about it. And we'd love for you all to be here with us as we talk about it. Absolutely. Um, we love having you. We love interacting with you. And uh, yeah, it's been a wild season and I can't wait to see it more. Just remember the Rays playoff odds have actually went up 4% since we traded Yandy. I mean, Randy. How about that? <laughs> Imagine if we traded Yandy and the, oh yeah. Yeah. We love Craziness. you guys. Uh, keep coming back. Uh, drop us a follow, drop us a like, drop us a share. We love you. And as always, raise up. Raise up. Thank you for tuning into this presentation by RBLI Sports. On your way out of the stadium, please remember to like and subscribe.